Howdy y'all, Christy here with Little Salty Home Center. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am back today with another uh, weekly garden update. The heat is really on uh, here early July in North Texas. We are in triple digits now, so some things are thriving and a lot of things are struggling. So let's go see what's going on. All right, first up with the update is the tomato patch. Um, if you did not see last week's update, we did put the 40% shade cloth up over the tomato patch. It is making it about 10 degrees cooler um, underneath, which should extend the season of the tomatoes quite a bit. Um, I had been battling spider mites for a while. It looks like that issue is much more under control. If you look at this new growth, it's nice and green. Um, this, it, so uh, right here was where I had a garden spider and I'm not sure where she got off to, but I'm not seeing her anymore. Um, so I wasn't like spraying these plants because I didn't want to disturb her. So they still had a bit of mites doing their thing. Um, whenever I didn't see her out here this morning, I did give them a good spray. So a couple more days of heavy spraying on here and those should be taken care of. But overall, uh, most of the spider mite issue is much more under control over here. Um, this bed <laughs> is quite wild and a little bit unruly and kind of chaotic. Um, what I have going on here, aside from the cherry tomatoes across the back, are tomatillos. And this is one plant, this wild and crazy thing. All of this is the same plant and it's just like laying across. Oh, look at the, look at the wheel bug, y'all. Look at that guy. Hello. So it is uh, in the assassin bug family. It eats other bugs. So... I'm happy to see that guy. I'll just try not to make it angry. I don't know if they bite humans, but I don't want to find out today. So, um, anyway, that is a really giant tomatillo plant. It's all up in here, going through the cherry tomatoes, laying across the Listata di Giandia eggplants there. Um, I have been harvesting eggplants um, here and there. I use them on Fridays for Pizza Friday. We basically just slice them up and use them as the pizza crust. That way we're kind of boosting our vegetable intake and it's really good. And then the other day I made some baba ganoush with all eggplants that I harvested out of here. Um, that was also really good. My middle son, Logan, really loved it a lot. So um, this bed is doing pretty well. Uh, obviously, if you can tell by all the chaos here, um, I have planted, I direct sowed some squash in here and I haven't seen where it sprouted. I don't know if it did and roly polies ate it or if it didn't sprout. I don't really know what's going on. Hello, doggo. Here's my baby boy. Come here. My buddy. And I also transplanted some purple basil into here as well. Um, my goal with the purple basil is to be able to make pink lemonade with Lily. Uh, if you guys want to see that process, just let me know and I'll get a video up on that because it's pretty cool. Just walked through a spider web. Welcome to gardening. Okay, so this middle bed is also one that is quite chaotic and messy and wild and a bit unruly and I'm okay with it. Um, so these plants right here, these first few are starting to fizzle out. Um, there are still some tomatoes growing on them, but these are determinate plants. So once, the, once these come off, then I'm just going to remove these three plants. So there's two Romas and a Marglobe over here. Those will all come out and that will start to make some room for some fall plants um, once you know it's time to start transplanting the fall garden out. The rest of the tomatoes in this bed are indeterminate varieties so I am trying to keep them alive for a while in hopes that uh, whenever the temperatures do cool back down I'll get more tomatoes. Now one of the plants that is doing just I don't know it's really unstoppable at this point um, this plant that's doing really well is the porter and these are like 
kind of apple shaped. They're not very big. They're the equivalent of like larger, super large cherry tomatoes, almost like a salad size. But the plant is just like utterly ridiculously prolific. I mean, you can see all the tomatoes in here. These are all from the same plant, all, all down onto the ground. I'll be harvesting tomatoes later today because there's just tomatoes everywhere from, from the Porter tomato plant. And I am beyond cool with that because that means that I will have fresh tomatoes through the heat of the summer, which is awesome. So um, as we come down here, we can kind of see where the birds are uh, using the woolly cake tomato as their personal water source. And I need to come harvest some of these off just cause they're kind of rotting on the vine. I just haven't gotten to it yet. Um, I cut down the borage that was here because it got sick. I think it got this sage plant sick. That is just dying off. And so I just need to pull it out and make sure that I don't plant anything in that exact spot. Um, I do have some profusion zinnias planted right here. I am okay if they don't flower, you know, like if that whatever was happening with the borage is in the soil. Um, I, I have accepted that these may die, but I'm hopeful that I will get some flowers from them right here. And then I have more purple basil that was transplanted in. Um, this basil is starting to get more sunlight, so it's finally starting to grow quite a bit. Um, there was so much going on right here. It was just so full that a bunch of stuff down the middle was just like not getting any light at all. You can see another basil here finally getting light. And then there's like little marigolds that are finally getting light. So um, as I start to remove plants, more light will trickle in and those plants that are down the middle will start growing and um, flourishing a bit better. So what we have over here is, uh, this is the Black Beauty tomato on the end here. And I'm just trying to keep it alive. I'm not sure how well it's going to work out. Um, this one next to it is a mystery plant. I am of the belief that it might be an Arkansas Traveler uh, just because it's had the same size tomatoes as the other Arkansas Traveler. Um, and then I have a Dark Galaxy tomato over here that has a couple of tomatoes on it. Um, and then I have cow peas down, planted down and some, like this one is all dried out. So let me go ahead and harvest that and I'll shell it in the house. Well, I accidentally took the whole plant. Good job. Um, anyway, so I have cow peas planted here. Uh, this one, I've already harvested several off of. The variety that's planted in this bed is the Phenomenal. And so whenever you shell them, they actually do look like uh, the black and white spotted cows. And they're super cute. Um, there are some that are growing peas um, farther down the bed. These three plants are the ones that are getting the most light. So they're the ones that are providing the most peas at this point. This bed, this third bed had the largest tomato varieties. So my really big Italian heirloom, um, giant Syrian, giant crimson, uh, Texas star. It had Thorburn's terracotta, um, Sart Roloy, I think is how that is pronounced. Um, several have been cut down just because they, as soon as they got hot, they said no thank you and just gave up on life. Um, I do have one Rebel Starfighter Prime here that I'm trying to keep alive to hopefully get some more off of when and if it ever cools back down. Um, Thorburn's Terracotta, still alive here. Um, I have both Thorburn's terracotta plants. This is the other one. The one on the corner is Italian heirloom and it has outgrown the shade cloth that's growing up and beyond. Uh, just trying to keep it alive. I don't think that whenever, you know, the temperatures cool back down that there will be enough time for the tomatoes to grow and get ripe on the vine, but we'll see. I, I mean, before, you know, the first fall frost or whatever. 
And then on this side, uh, this is a Japanese black truffle plant. Birds, you can see where birds took their, their tomato tax for keeping the grasshopper population in check. Um, they have also taken their tomato tax on these giant Syrian tomatoes. Um, I'm probably just going to cut down this entire row. This is Costoludo genovese, also birds taking the tomato tax. Um, and then this is a black from Tula, birds again taking their tomato tax. So I think it's going to actually benefit me a bit more at this point to just cut these down, uh, get this bed ready for fall planting and just keep the back row, uh, try to keep those alive and healthy since they do get a little bit of the shade cloth. These don't get any. <laughs> so um, this one does have cowpeas planted in it as well. And what is growing in here is the purple hole pink eye, which you can see right here. Um, that's planted all down the back side of the bed. The vines get quite long and vining, so it's kind of just growing wild through there. This Persian basil is probably like three feet tall. It's huge. So um, I've been coming out and just snipping it off to keep it from bolting. And the new leaves are super purple, so we can use those to make pink lemonade probably pretty soon, basil lemonade. So um, overall, the back two beds of the tomato patch are doing pretty well. They're pretty healthy. This bed, I just need to come through and remove some plants and then, you know, try to help those back plants stay alive as well as I can. Um, I need to figure out a bird bath slash bird watering situation so that they won't be dive bombing the tomatoes for the water because I do like having them around for various pest control and it's really nice to hear them chirping in the mornings and stuff um, but I don't want them necessarily you know that taking their taxes out their grasshopper tax on my food that I'm growing um, so that's something that I need to figure out very quickly since it is so hot, I do want them to have water. They need the water. So that's why I haven't really complained too much about them going after the tomatoes. But it'd be nice if they had, you know, their own devoted water source. Now, these two beds are going to look quite different than um, last week's weekly update. I did come out here and I did do quite a bit of pruning um, on the basils. The only basils that I did not prune were the blue spice basil. Um, I left that one for the bees to enjoy and you know the other pollinators, the hoverflies and all of those things um, and it smells really good. So I left this one to just go nuts. I may come back and prune it if it starts like dying off and fizzling out. We'll see. And I also removed the cucumbers. Once we hit the days uh, last week where it was like 97, 98, um, the cucumbers just very quickly just gave up. So I pulled those out and um, at this point I'm just focusing on keeping these plants healthy and alive and the basil pruned back. I need to harvest a bunch today because I'm going to make some pesto to make some roasted potatoes um, and then I also transplanted in some basil plants here and there in this bed. And then I also planted squash seeds in here, but I haven't seen where they have germinated. So I don't know if it did or if I just need to plant more seeds or roly polies ate them or well, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not having the greatest luck with squash this year, but I'm going to keep trying. Uh, and then the okra is starting to really just do well. Um, the ants really love, really love the okra pods. So I have to get out here with the water hose every morning and spray them off, but it's not that big a deal, you know? Um, but yeah, these are starting to thrive. Okra does fantastic in the heat. And as they get bigger, they're going to help cast some shade over these sweet peppers, which will help them stay a bit healthier, uh, extend their life a bit. Um, and then 
since oh yeah so some other things that were taken out of this bed there was a borage here this one right here that had like flopped over and was looking quite sick so I cut it out there was a marigold here with that had white marigold flowers that had um, flopped over and it was not doing very well either so I removed that one and um, that opened up quite a bit of sunlight for this basil right here which I think is red opal basil maybe um, so we can use that one for the pink basil lemonade as well and then this cardinal basil is starting to form the flower heads and I just want to take a minute and admire how pretty that little flower head is. Now it will get taller, much like those, um, but if you'll notice, it's like a red burgundy color compared to the other basil flower heads that are like white or purple. So um, it's really, compared to the other basil heads that are like white or purple. So it's really stunning and I imagine that once it does start forming flowers it's really going to attract a lot of pollinators. Um, that is the whole reason why I grow this variety. This is cardinal basil is because of these flower heads. This is the first year that it has actually bolted for me and this is my third year growing it. So I think it's like more of a heat tolerant variety and it uh, takes a lot longer to go to seed but it you know, it looks like this year I'm finally going to get to see flower heads from it, which is really exciting. And then right here, um, the squash plant is doing really well. I do check it regularly for squash bug eggs and then the vine borer eggs. Um, I haven't seen any yet. Um, supposedly, I, I do see like little lots of lots of little black ants. I'm not too concerned about those. Supposedly you can burn the squash bug eggs. Um, I will probably just tear that leaf off and throw the whole thing in the garbage. I'm not really sure. <laughs> um, and then this is the yellow scallop squash. It's finally starting to put on lots of good growth. Um, I pulled out the nasturtiums here so I think that it finally has room to like stretch its legs and you know live its life. Oh the other thing that I pulled out uh, I was just looking at these radishes and I realized the other thing I pulled out was the white icicle radish out of these beds. Um, if you guys watched last week, you'll remember that they were kind of leaning over and just kind of making a big mess. Um, it had actually broken this heavy hitter okra here, which is now like leaning. I need to probably try to stake it like this and, you know, perform plant surgery, but I have not. It's still alive. So, yeah, that's really interesting. That okra really just wants to live. Um, so, yeah, I pulled out all of the white icicle radish. I did save a big bunch of the seed pods. Uh, once those dry out, I'll just save those seeds so that I'll be able to replant um, white icicle radish next year. And then this bed is more of the same. I did more cleanup, um, removed sick plants, pruned down basils. You can see that it's really trying to just go to seed very quickly. Um, anyway, yes, pruned down basils, removed sick plants. I transplanted in uh, purple basil and then another profusion zinnia there, which some bugs have nibbled on. And then this squash actually did germinate. So that will probably start growing big and leafy very soon. And then these okra are also doing quite well. I actually need to harvest that one. And then we have blooms all the way down. That one can be harvested as well. So I have a few okra pods I can harvest. It is very slow to start, like you'll harvest two to three, and then before you know it, you're harvesting 50 pods. <laughs> it, it happens quite quickly whenever it gets hot since okra does so well in the heat. Um, but again, this is just another bed where I'm just trying to keep plants healthy and thriving through the heat because it is getting quite hot quite quickly but um, as you can see the beds look pretty good so just kind of stand back over here and give a view of all five raised beds and that front one just looks very out of control so I do need to do some work in that one. 
sunflower patch. Um, I'm thinking that I need to bring the ladder out and prune some of these branches back a bit so that some more sun will get through here. Um, we do have a few that are blooming. Like this one is just absolutely stunning to me. And then we have the shorter, super bright yellow one. It's actually not even that short, it just leaned over. And then I think this one is about done, but very beautiful. And then we have these smaller guys on the end over here. Right here. Um, I did come through and plant some more seeds uh, two different sunflower mixes through here, um, watering it in really well, making sure the soil stays moist. So hopefully we get a second run of sunflowers through here before, you know, we get freezing temperatures, um, which seems silly to think about whenever it's a hundred and something degrees outside, but here we are dreaming of colder temperatures. Okay. So flower bed, um, it's kind of in like a bit of a transition point. Uh, I had started a bunch of heat tolerant varieties by seed uh, and then got them transplanted out into here finally. So what we have going on is zinnias, gomfrina, uh, more zinnias, sunflowers, and then some marigolds, um, all supposedly very heat tolerant varieties. So uh, my husband, Jake and I transplanted them out all the way down the flower bed and um the room everything else that's like already well established was here we just didn't remove it um so we have we have some amaranth there the snapdragon that is like unkillable it's my favorite snapdragon um we have diablo cosmos this sahara Sahara Rebecca that is finally opening. It's so darling. Um, we have geranium there. And then we have, this is called a blood leaf. And it, I'm not really sure like if that's what it's supposed to do as it ages. I thought it was going to be like a shorter plant, but that's okay. Um, it does add color against all this green. So that's nice. And we have salvia, um, what is it called? Henry Duelberg, I think, salvia, um, hollyhock, a volunteer basil. Um, we have feverfew, a few different types of milkweed growing interspersed throughout. Um, this is pumpkin on a stick. I think last week I accidentally called it eggplant on a stick, and that's because it is a type of eggplant, but it looks like little pumpkins on sticks. So that's what is going on here. And the plant is violent. It has pokey things, so have to be very careful whenever I'm over here working so that I don't stab myself with a plant on accident. And then we have, you know, kind of the mirror image over here um, going all the way down. Hollyhock, salvia, different milkweeds, feverfew, eggplant on a stick. Um, the new plants that were transplanted in, more amaranth, and then this Sahara Rebecca that is just showing off and it's so beautiful and I love it so much and um, a lot of the stuff was just transplanted in Sunday morning today is Wednesday so it's only been in here three days and it's looking really great I already see some new growth on the transplant stuff so hopefully sooner rather than later we start seeing seeing some flower blooms from the new plants and there will be lots of color and stuff going on through here um, whew, it's a warm day. Okay, so this one, this green stalk has um, cow peas for the most part. There are two bush bean plants left in here, and that's because they have some beans on them that I'm waiting to come to maturity here, as you can see. Uh, the rest of it is cow peas. I have harvested quite a few peas off of here. Like here's one that looks like it's ready. For whatever reason, the ants really like, for whatever reason, the ants really like where it connects. I have no idea why. So I always have to like shake off the ants and make sure they don't stay on my hands. Um, so yeah, I've harvested quite a few peas off of here already. I'm shelling them onto a dehydrator tray 
Uh, I'm not putting them in the dehydrator. I'm just kind of letting the ambient air in my house dry them. And then I will put them in a jar with an oxygen absorber pack thingy. And um, then we'll have our new, our, uh, new Year's Black Eyed Peas for luck. And I already told my mom that I would share with her. So um, just trying to keep the cow peas going. And so far they're doing really well, much better than the ones I planted last year. So really happy about that. Over here, uh, whew, this is right in the heat of the sun. Okay, over here is the green stalk that has the hot peppers in it. Uh, it also has some companion plants planted throughout. As you can see, the very sad looking marigolds. Interestingly, the orange ones are the ones that look sad while the yellow ones are doing quite all right. So I need to come out and do some heavy pruning on these or just pull them out completely. I haven't decided which I'm going to do. There's also some basil and it looks like it is doing all right, but not, you know, super duper great. Um, there are lots of peppers that are growing um, all throughout here. These buena mulata peppers. Um, I have two plants with those. This plant has five or six peppers on it. And then this one has a few. And then um, lots of jalapenos, lots of serranos. Um, I do have a cayenne that has, I harvested some off yesterday. Um, and then the mushroom pepper I've harvested a few off of. The sugar rush peach we've harvested a few off of. Oh, it looks like this basil is going to bounce back. It looked really bad, but it looks like there's some new growth. So I'll keep an eye on that and see. I did uh, fertilize both with liquid and then I came through and I added plant tone in each of the individual pockets um, just to give a little bit extra boost uh, to these because it is so hot and they are getting blasted by the sun for several hours a day. Um, but um, this side obviously looks a little less stressed than this side. So, but I mean, overall the peppers look pretty well. I think once I come through and I pull out these orange marigolds, uh, the green stock itself will look a lot healthier. I see a couple of pockets that are a little low on soil so I can fill, top them off with soil and then that will help insulate the roots of the plants a bit. Um, but overall, it's still doing okay considering, you know, how hot it is and how much sun it is getting. And then over here, the hodgepodge green stalk. Um, I have harvested a few okra pods um, from the okra plants that are in here. So, the experiment is in progress to see how much okra I can actually get off of my patio. Now, not every pocket has okra planted in it, but there's a little pod there that you can see. And then um, this one here was the first one that got harvested. And then I think this plant had the other one, um, but they're really starting to grow. Uh, like, you know, like you see, there's a few pods growing here and there. And I did heart, uh, what's the word? I did fertilize this very recently as well with both liquid, oh, sorry, with both liquid and plant tone. So um, everything over here, except for the orange marigolds for whatever reason, is looking pretty healthy. Um, the Aleppo pepper still just has the one pepper on it but that's okay. I wasn't, you know, I'm not trying to feed my whole family off of Aleppo pepper, so it's okay. And then we have habanero, habanero here as well. Lemon habanero here. Looks like that one's going to be blooming soon, so that's exciting. And this Carolina Reaper hasn't really grown a whole lot. Maybe it's getting too much shade. Maybe once I remove this, that'll help. Hope I get some more sun. Obviously the mint is doing well. <laughs> mint minting, I'll tell you what. But um, overall this green stock is 
doing really well too. Uh, that was chamomile that has kind of fizzled out. I will just come in and I'll cut this back right now. It has dill also growing in it and mint also growing in it. So there's definitely life happening, happening in that pocket. Chamomile just doesn't like the heat and it got hot. It went from comfortable to way too hot, way too quickly, uh, as things usually do. And then the last kind of update, um, strawberries. As you can see, there's still only a few. That's okay. Last sort of update. I have some fall garden seeds started here. So there's Brussels sprouts and four different varieties of petunias that are started here. Uh, there will be a seed starting video coming out on Monday detailing all of that. So uh, be on the lookout for that. And um, hope I may replant some squash seeds just to make sure that, you know, I get more than just the one plant that just sprouted. Um, and then hope for the best. I don't know. I'm really hopeful I'm going to get some squash this year. Um, but that's kind of everything that's happening. The lime tree. These limes are still trucking along. Really excited about these. And because this is a perennial, it'll continue to give limes year after year um, for as long as I can keep the lime tree alive. So very exciting. Uh, you can tell how hot it is by how much the hardy hibiscus is pouting in the heat. Um, then we have the oak leaf hydrangea. These zinnias are doing really well. Um, I, I, they did have more, but I pruned back the ones that were, you know, kind of on their way out. The mum I still need to prune, but overall this area of container plants is doing pretty well. But that's the update for this week. Some stuff is doing really well and some stuff is doing really not. Um, but that is part of the course in the middle of the summer in North Texas, whenever you're growing a vegetable garden. Some things you can expect to do well uh, in spring and then some things you can expect to do well in the heat. And then some things you take a gamble on every year that you grow it, squash being one of those things. So um, thank you guys so much for joining me today. If you want to see more weekly updates, please feel free to like and subscribe and do all those youtube -y things. Um, but until next time, until Monday, you guys go find a way to get those garden manicures. Bye!